Okay, let, um, last video we explored a couple indeterminate forms, and I think we only really covered um, these two. So I'm just going to sort of expand on that, and we're just going to kind of go from there as a refresher. You know, here's uh, L'Hopital's rule, yada yada. So hey, let's just dive into some examples. So here I got I got the limit of x multiplied by cotangent x. Okay, so what's what's going to happen here? Um, I need to find a pen first, don't I? Okay, here's a pen. So, you know, as x goes to zero, um, well, you know, x will go to zero, definitely, but cotangent, what's co cotangent is going to go toward, that's cosine over sine, so it looks like we're in this situation right here, okay? So, what I mean, what does that mean, you know? I mean, is it what is zero times infinity? Is it zero? Eh, maybe. Um, basically what it comes down to is which one wins here? Does x approach zero uh, faster than cotangent approaches infinity? Well, we really don't know. We'll, ha we'll, have, to, we'll have to check that out and uh, kind of see. And it might not even be either one of these, okay? So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to try, anytime we run into this indeterminate form right here, and you know, I've got it listed right here. When we run into that form, what I, what I like to try to do is see if there's any way I can rewrite this expression and get it into, you know, this form, you know, or um, you know, zero zero. See if I can do something like that with it. Okay, because that, because that, these these forms right here are generally easier to work with. So let's see if we can't rewrite this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the x upstairs, and I'm just going to write tangent x. Because 1 over tangent is the same as cotangent, right? You know, it's just, just the reciprocal. Okay, so now, okay, if um, x goes to 0, we get 0 on top, and tangent, that's sine of cosine, so that'll be 0 over 1, which is also 0. So... All right, no problem. I, I, I'll, I'll have to differentiate it again, but hey, at least I can still use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. And I get 1 over um, derivative of the tangent. That's secant squared. Okay, and that ends up being just 1 over 1, which is 1. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll say that the limit of this is 1. And that's, and this is this is probably, I don't know, I, I would say 90% of the time, if you can if you can rearrange this thing and get it into that form, um, you'll probably be doing okay. Okay, so let's do another one. That was a pretty easy one. Here's another one. Okay, so what's going on with this one? So as, as x goes towards 0, um, what happens? I end up with this 1 over 0, and really, that's just really 1 over sine. So we get like 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0. So that kind of takes the form of infinity minus infinity. And, you know, we, we, we'd kind of like to say, hey, that's 0, you know, but it, that might not necessarily be the case. Um, a lot of times it is 0, but let's just, uh, you know, to be, uh, to be solid about this, um, let's do some other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can't rearrange this and get it into infinity over infinity or zero over zero or something like that. So, um, and second of all, I don't even like this cosecant fraction business. So I am going to just what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it with uh, the sine function and I'm going to do some common denominator action. So if I have if I have this situation right here, well, I'd need to multiply x over here and I need to go sine x over here. Okay, then I have common denominator. So that is what I'm going to do. And then that'll come out to sine minus x over x sine x. Okay? So let's see here. Uh, better put that in there. So that would give me a zero minus zero. Okay, and that then it's zero times zero, and that's that's okay to work with. That's just zero over zero again. Okay, so I didn't get an answer, but I am 
I am uh, okay to use L'Hopital's rule again, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I wanna zoom in here a little bit. Maybe it'll make it a little easier to see. So I got that. So I'm just gonna differentiate everything. And that's just gonna be cosine of x minus one. And over here, I'm just gonna use, on this bottom part, I'm gonna use the product rule. Okay, so, um, what do I got? I got one times sine x plus cosine x, and I guess we'll just squeeze x back, back in there, okay? Uh, so where, where does that leave me? Well, that leaves me with 1 minus 1 when I take the limit over, let's see, 0 plus 0, and that's also an indeterminate form, okay? So still didn't get the answer, but hey, at least we can still use our, our new rule. Okay, so I'm just going to differentiate this thing again. So I'm just going to get negative sine x on top. The 1 will go away. Um, sine x, that's just going to give me cosine x. And it looks like I have to use that product rule again. So I'm going to end up with 1 multiplied by cosine x. Uh, then derivative of cosine x, that's sine x. Then times regular f. So that would be just x again. And that, that kind of looks looks a little trashy, doesn't it? So let's um, clean it up. I always recommend doing that just because it's easy to make a mistake if everything's not written out nice and neat. Okay, so that's that's where we get sim we simplify it and we go into there. Actually, let me zoom in a little more. Okay, so. What, if I take the limit here, what do I get? I get 0 over uh, cosine of 0 plus cosine of 0. That's 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 0. Um, this one's okay because that's just 0 over 2, which is 0. Okay, so the limit on this one is 0. Okay, limit of cosecant, that's what we started with. And we just had to do some, um, you know, algebra some, you know, some messing around, you know, so, uh, that's where we went with this one, so, let's see if we can't get another one going, okay, this one, this one's kind of interesting, let's, uh, let's do our substitution, and what do we, what do we get, you know, theoretically here, um, well, that could, x will go into infinity, but what does sine of infinity go to, I mean, that's kind of weird, right, because, you know, it, sine of x, you know, as x goes to infinity, doesn't have a limit. It doesn't exist. It just bounces in between negative 1 and negative 1. Or negative 1 and positive 1. So I guess we'd have to say, I guess conceptually you could look at that as well, plus or minus 1. Okay? And then at the bottom you have infinity times well, you know, again, you know, what is the limit of sine of x? It doesn't exist, does it? Okay, so I guess, uh, you know, roughly you could possibly think about it as infinity multiplied by plus or minus one, which would give you infinity over infinity. I don't know if that's really the correct way to do it, um, but, you know, let, let's just uh, kind of go from there, okay? So let's say we use uh, L'Hopital's rule, and we did the derivative, and we got negative cosine x and then we used our product rule so that was f okay so you got one sine x multiplied by x again so well it looks like I'm running out of time on this one I'll tell you what um, let me finish this one up in the next video, okay? Because this one, it just, it, really, it doesn't have a limit, okay? The limit does not exist, but I, I want to show you why that is, okay? And I, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm out of time, so um, let's continue on.